Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I am delighted to be joined by the wonderful Nicole, who did a beautiful film, The Little Thief. Um, hello, Nicole. Hello. Thank you for nice having me. Nice to have you here, who's attended uh, our, our New Filmmakers event. So we're here virtually celebrating you today. Um, but for those who haven't seen The Little Thief, let's take a look at a clip. <laughs> Um, Nicole, I, 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 I love this story so much. It was just so sweet and cute and wonderful. Um, could you please explain for those that haven't seen it, tell us a little brief synopsis of your film. Well, to be a little like really brief, it's about a young boy who goes to the market with his mom and steals a single bean and then experiences guilt for the first time. Um, so it's like this little journey of him to self-awareness, to consciousness, and and you know, to this loss of innocence of what stealing mean, means, even if it's like a tiny, tiny thing. You know? I, like, it was so, like, it's so funny. I watched it and it's like my heart and my mind went straight back to being that age and how big things steal and like how important and you can't sleep at night and all these different things. And you captured it so well in the film. It was really great. Where the inspiration come for you and how did you get connected with the project? So this story is a cinematographer's story. It's really personal to him. Uh, it is an AFI MOS film or visual essay film, which is, they, they have three rules. One, the first rule, it has to be three minutes. Um, you have to be able to tell a story in that amount of time. The second rule is no dialogue. You can kind of have to figure out with sound design and with music. And the third rule is has to be shot in 35 millimeters because, wow. you know, nowadays we don't get to have that luxury anymore. Yeah. So it's also really interesting because it was my first time shooting in 35 millimeters. Wow. And um, I mean, it's a, as I mentioned, he's a cinematographer's project. His name is Andras Roder and he's from Hungary. And he was kind enough to invite me to direct the project because actually AFI gives uh, the cinematographers the option, like if they want to direct it themselves, like write it, direct it, and shoot it, they can do that. So Andras was really clear that he wanted to tell this story and he wanted to write it, but he invited me to step in and direct it. And I, I really liked it because I actually used to do the same thing when I was young, like steal these little things that are really insignificant and, and are not hurting anybody, but you're sort of doing it for different reasons. In my case, I think it was probably I was with friends and it's to like get accepted in the group and be cool and like, you know, the thrill of the moment. I think his story is more like he once actually did that. He went to the market with his mom. He saw like these beans and then he saw the price per kilo and he thought that was the price for like one bean. So he thought, you know, this is really precious. This is really valuable. And he took one, he just wanted to have one. And then he took it and then he started to feel guilty. And I think he had nightmares of like people coming for him and putting him in jail, and like all these things. Mm -hmm. So he always remembers that. And, um, and with him, it was more the conversation. Okay, we both did these things as kids and then, you kind of grow up and you start, you know, building your set of values or principles and you realize, um, you know, you shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah. But what is this journey you now? And, and for us, it was really interesting also that the kid sort of realizes it by his own, nobody's telling him this is wrong. Like the mom is not imposing these rules or these um, restrictions for him. It's just him doing the, the thought process, you know, and, and building who he is. It was captured so well, like captured well visually. It was, I love the, the, the music, the sound design. It was, was, was really wonderful. It really worked very well. And there was so much that was captured just about, obviously there was no dialogue. Um, you know, this young boy, you really 
felt all of his energy and feelings that he was having at the time. And I'm just so curious for you as a director, Nicole, when you know you kind of got those like restrictions, uh, you obviously there's no dialogue and, you know, um, you know, there's a certain element and way it's going to be, you know, presented. Um, how did you go about working with your actor? Like, how is that process for you? Because you're working with someone very young, there's no dialogue. And, and how, do you, how do you work with your actors in those situations? Well, with, with the boy, we thought it was going to be very challenging. Actually, I do have like a lot of experience working with young people. And that's what, one of the reasons I think Andras reached out to me. But I don't think for narrative purposes, I don't think I've worked with someone that young yet. He was six. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a challenge. But actually, this actor, after we cast, after we auditioned and made the decision to cast him, we realized he was actually really experienced because he's been in this film, Beautiful Boy. He was Timothée Chalamet's like six-year-old version of the film. He had a scene with Steve Carell. Like he already, you know, he was in the big league. Yeah, his yep. own like little actor's chair with his name. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, um, I, I, I understood why it was so easy to work with him. But what we did uh, was like a bunch of improv scenes with the mom, uh, Nell Hislinger. Uh, with her, we, you know, we pretended they're in the park and like, why would they play um, off? And then that she had to tell him bedtime stories. She had to come up with these stories. And then with him, I would like, because he's, we created like little backstories for each one of the characters. And the character of, of the little thief was like, you know, he's a single child. He has no brothers and sisters. He needs to figure out how to play, like how he has to have a lot of imagination. And that's why he's picking on things in the market, right? Like he's used to being alone and having to entertain himself by his own means. Um, you know, with the mom, it was like, she's distracted in the sense, you know, she has marital problems, husband is never home. So she's like trapped in that thing. So she didn't realize he stole this and then he's going through this nightmare and he's going through all this journey, like she just doesn't pay attention to that. So with the kid, we will play like, you know, you're a detective, you're a police officer, you da da da. And then when, when we brought the stand on her to rehearse the scenes, we will go and buy things from him and get him distracted. And we will tell uh, Q, the little kid, to manage to steal stuff. We will place like different things oh, yeah. and without him noticing. So like we will play those and we're like, you're a detective, you're a little thief, you're a little police. Oh, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love how you did that. That's that's so cool how you just, you know, you built that energy up. I love that. That's amazing. What was fascinating to hear about this, um, Nicole, is that like, I was like, I love this like fantasy world that you created in this market. And I was like, how on earth are they filmed this market, this atmosphere? And then you filmed it all in one space, right? It was all in one, like one warehouse. You filmed this whole thing. Yeah, we built the market from scratch, literally. Wow. Um, I think I was telling you a little bit, like we began scouting markets and then we realized it was just not the best idea starting from, you have no control from the people are walking, you can't close everyone, you know, like stand. And then um, Andras wanted to have, you know, control of the lights and the shots. And then we realized it was just better to rent a warehouse and build it from scratch. So our production designer, Astrid Anderson, also did a great job. Actually, I think most of the budget literally went to the market because yeah. we shot it in one day, but we rented it for two days because we needed like a whole day to prep. Um, um, she needed a whole day to prep the market. She like drew every stand. So we approved it. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about like there's gonna be a stand of like the milkman and a flower stand and a lady with potatoes. And we with the costume designer create and even if you don't see them because you're no, I, the, kids, it was, the attention to detail was mesmerizing. Like I was so curious. I was like, wow, this this is this world you've created was just brilliant. And and I, I'm glad that you went that route and you kind of had full control over it because I think it made the experience much more magical, you know, being in control of, of what you are articulating on screen. It was really great to watch. Yeah, so. and we needed to get a bunch of extras too. And then we set it in the early 50s. We wanted to have this time period. Um, so yeah, it was dressing everybody up, you know, um, it was creating like everything, but that was 
very interesting. There was real fruit, like by the end of the, you know, by the end of the shoot, we were giving every, all the crew and the cast <laughs> fruit to, to take away home. I love that. Um, and then also the room, I mean, granted we did like focus all the resources in the market because we wanted yeah. to, for it to look real and then less resources for the room, but the room was also built from scratch. And, you know, wow. we picked the fabric for the curtains, like these pledge or like square yeah. um, fabrics are very 50s and we, you know, we we built everything. It's no, it's wonderful. And it's, it's a sweet story. I think it's a story that everyone can look back and relate to when they were a young person and those choices that you make that, you know, that the just, you know, just the thing, the thoughts that run through your head as a six year old, you know, is was just really great to sort of see. Um, now, how wonderful it certainly has been that this project, which, you know, you were obviously invited to, uh, to, to direct, um, uh, that it's, we had it at New Filmmakers LA in partnership with the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and having it go on a festival run. How has it feel being releasing the film to the world and what's your experience been like thus far? I mean, it's been great. Honestly, I didn't expect that it be, will be received this well. Um, and it's, you know, we were, our world premiere was with you guys, with yeah. you guys, and it was amazing because yeah, it's partnered with the Academy, has so much reach. You guys do like such a good work promoting not only the film, but the filmmaker. And, and yeah, I think people relate a lot to it. And it's also doing very well in uh, children's festival as well. Good. Yeah, it's even playing uh, back in Mexico for these, Great. like, to support, like, children for lower resources and get, oh. give them a day of, like, watching films. You know, it's already been selected for 2021 in Providence, like, children's film festival. Great. It's doing It's doing amazing. But its world premiere was was here and it was great well we're honored we're honored and we you know and i and i love that this film is is getting the the journey around the world that it that it that absolutely deserves as well uh what is next for you nicole well i recently graduated from afi uh from the directing program and right now yeah we have this film and my thesis film going out and you know mm -hmm. pandemic and everything uh yeah. has me developing and writing and applying to programs and developing my like longer projects i'm developing two features and um tv show my tv show is based on my thesis film which is a uh, coming of age drama story about a 16 year old that's in love with her best girlfriend who's moving away from the town they grew up in together and um that's the short and then the tv show is about what happens when she comes back the next summer to visit and how things have changed and how mm -hmm. they're adapting to, to each other and it's set in the 90s as well so cool. it's you know communication is not as easy and uh, yeah. straightforward as now like you couldn't text you couldn't yeah. you know there's early emails um so so yeah i'm developing oh, yeah. that and then a feature in mexico city and a feature set in la too so i hope when you know the industry fully opens up um i can start working on, on yeah and we got we got a lot of projects that coming up so they need to get made for sure that's so i'm nicole it's so amazing there's so many exciting things uh, that you're working on right now and and you know utilizing your time in these and these very unprecedented times as well which is great um you know i mean i know you're so you're obviously early on in your career and you know i know there's people out there that are watching this that would you know I uh, would love to hear maybe any advice that you could share, things that for you as a filmmaker that you like to kind of follow that maybe you can help and support others out there who want to follow um, in your footsteps. Do you have any advice out there you can maybe share that you go by? Well, I think, you know, I know film filmmaking is a luxury, like not everybody has the opportunity in terms of like the time or even, you know, the means. But I would say like, if you really feel that's your passion, just go for it however you can. Sometimes we get scared, you know, and I'm talking for myself, like we're scared, we're not good enough on we're never, you know, there's a lot of competition overall here in LA, you know, everybody's doing the thing. But I would say if that's your passion, just believe in yourself because if you don't do it, nobody else is gonna do it. Like the first person that needs to do it is you and, and believe you can do it no matter who you are, or where you're at, just mm -hmm. go and do it and don't let anyone, because it's very easy to fall apart 
if if somebody tells you like this is not good or you're never gonna make it but if you hear all the stories of like the big filmmakers they also got rejected so yeah. many times like exactly. there's so many many rejections there's so many things it's not an easy path no no it's but not. i i swear like when i started i was like there's no way i'm gonna get into afi there's and no way i'm gonna be in this festival there's no yeah. way i'm gonna be new filmmakers there's no way i'm gonna develop a feature and like Suddenly, I mean, it, it costs time. It costs, like, you need to prioritize and you need to put a lot of energy and work more than, like, a normal job or, a, mm -hmm. you know, an office job. But I think if it's your your passion, it doesn't really matter. And that's what will make you happy. So just go for it. And, and yeah, I think the, it's hard, but the most important thing is, like, never stop believing in yourself, even if it sounds cliche, because at a point, doubt doubting your own self is your biggest setback yeah no oh my goodness well that doesn't inspire you i don't know what else will because that was that was that's so wonderful and i'm and i'm so glad because you are a true example of someone that has talent and is you know utilizing all, all your resources and the best things you can do possible and and i think that was you know very inspirational so thank you but keep 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 making more films for us please nicole i i I'm really excited to see your journey unfold and thank you for the little thief um, it was an absolute gem and thanks to all of your cast and crew for, for making it happen as well. So thank you very much, Nicole. Thank you so much, Danny, and I hope to see you soon.